associated it with the university in that um, you'll see some university research out here and I'm actually, part of my salary comes um, from the university um, to run the research enterprise that goes on here. But there's also some input from the corporation in terms of um, they actually pay SDSU for my services to run the uh, production enterprise. And our production enterprise where we try to make money funds a good deal of what I'll talk about in terms of research, kind of the field scale stuff, not the little small plot stuff so much. That's done by other, other folks. So, uh, we have five quarters of land uh, plus 40. Uh, this is the original thing we call the main farm, which is, is uh, uh, three quarters. We're going to spend some time looking at that, and then as we head, head north up the road, we'll stop and look at our, briefly at our north unit. Um, we got started here because of irrigation, and it's, it's kind of a long convoluted story, but White men, white men just love to engineer things that are designed to overcome nature, and the irrigation projects is one of them. And so, way back some time ago, they planned and they dammed the Missouri River to stop flooding, and they had to stop flooding because somebody killed all the beaver, made hats out of them, and then they start plowing the ground with the homesteaders and the river start flooding, so instead of saying, gee, I put the beaver back and quit doing the damn plowing, they decided to build decided to build some dam. And then as part of that, they were going to take water uh, 120 miles east of here and, and irrigate some land that, that's similar to what they have in the Red River Valley. in the 70s because they were somebody that invented a center pivot that climbed these hills out here and so all of a sudden the guys out here start trying to irrigate but these soils a lot of our soils here in this area are, are wind blowing less capped soil um, after the glaciers came through then the wind blew and they got a less wind blown soil cap on them and they tend to seal up and the, and the water runs off. So I entered the picture trying to make, figure out ways to make water go in the soil under pivot irrigation with low pressure. And that's why I came to Burnett, Alberta to talk to corn growers, to talk about making water go in the ground under irrigators. So that's how we started. We're gonna start with that part of the the story in terms of making water go in the ground because whether you're dry land or irrigated, that's what it's all about. Now, we've now matured to the point where it doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to irrigate in this area because the energy costs are too high to pump the water up out of the river trench and up on top. Now, we have fairly low lifts. We're 105 foot of lift at maximum in terms of elevation lift, and then we run very low pressure sprinklers. Uh, if you, most of, the, most of the farms around here would be looking at 400 foot lift. It cost me about $66 an acre uh, for electricity to pump the water up out of the river. For, and we do it about as cheap as anybody can. If they had to go another two, 300 feet, you got to at least double that, and then you have have to pay for the pipelines and that kind of stuff. You just saw that service truck go by. That's not for our irrigation system. That's for the one laying in the ditch here. That's not ours either. But the guy across the road put a whole bunch of money into repairing the irrigation thing that flooded out last year. And it cost us about a hundred grand to do the repairs on them. So you got that on top of the electricity cost. It's incredibly expensive to irrigate. Well, it depends on, they get, we got a whole bunch of complex stuff, so it's, it's, there's so much demand charge, and then there's a minimum charge, and then if, if we have a thing where we're on peak and off peak, they, have, they can control our pumps, so when they start hitting a peak, all the 
people go to the lake or they come home from work and turn on the air conditioners and they start hitting the peak demand, they'll shut